Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Go Geo. So today I'm actually just going through some pieces in my rock collection and I've been thinking about a strange but interesting concept, a question that many of you may have asked at one point. If you like rock hounding and collecting, you may have wondered, but how do I really know if a specimen that I got is real or a fake? Obviously this is applies to when you get a specimen from someone, you buy a specimen, be it a rock, a crystal, fossils, whatever. Uh, there is strangely uh, fake ones are out there. So you may be wondering, well, how do I know what I got? Well, that's the question we're going to tackle today. Well, there's lots of ways we could actually go about answering a question like this, but one starter piece of advice is just learn as much as you can. Get good information, know good sources to go to. I try to provide as many of those as I can. In all the video adventures we do, I do put references and resource links in the description. So make sure if you're watching these Let's Go Geo videos that you're checking the description and, and seeing if there's any resources that could benefit you there. You really want to, depending on what you're collecting, have a good guide. Have a mineral guide book, a field guide, a fossil field guide. Not just necessarily a fun read, but real official guides that have images and information when it comes to minerals. You want information about how to identify those. I did a video where I showed you some basics on mineral identification. If you're getting into mineral collecting, you might want to check that out. You can also get field guides for fossils, um, but a lot of that gives you more information, not necessarily to tell if it's real or fake, but just to say, know where to find it, what age it is, and maybe what species it is, things like that. So um, we'll, we'll talk a little more in a second here uh, specifically about fossils because those get kind of weird. So you'll also probably benefit from some ba fairly basic gadgets. Consider what you're collecting. Are you into just minerals? Then like I said, you want to build or buy some kind of mineral testing kit that will involve some pretty basic tools that allow you to analyze the hardness and the physical properties of that mineral. Acid is a good way to test for validity of carbonates because with certain types of carbonates, it will fizz. Say if it contains a high amount of calcite, it will give you a fizz response with acid. So things like that are pretty easy for you to either build. Um, again, I do show you how to build a basic mineral test kit on your own here as well. Uh, but some other gadgets you might consider, depending on what kind of minerals you're dealing with and, and, and fossils, uh, would be things like a UV light. I do a lot with a UV light. It's a fun thing to play with. Uh, looking at fluorescence is awesome. And I'll be talking more about fluorescent minerals here and bringing some out from my collection to show you with this UV light. It's a 365 and this is a good wavelength for um, things like collecting minerals that are that give off fluorescence. So yeah, this is a pretty nice little um, easy to throw in a backpack. So a UV light is a good tool. And then also pretty basic stuff, I guess. Uh, I just always take some kind of magnifier around so you can actually analyze it more closely. And that's another way you want to be able to look at it. Um, that might help you distinguish between things like maybe glass, plastics, different types of resins. Maybe there's something weird going on that you can identify, but you're going to probably need a close-up view. In addition to that, you can recognize things that probably aren't faked um, when it comes to different crystal structures and things like that. So yeah, so a magnifying glass uh, magnifier is fairly simple and fairly cheap to have in your collection. So definitely recommend something like that. And then some more fun stuff to talk about. Other fun tools, and this is when you get into certain types of collections, would be things like Geiger counters and scintillators, basically radiation detectors. And I have these little pocket ones that are really easy to take in the field um, just for some basic fun with radioactivity. So this is one, it's a, uh, this is a Geiger counter by GMC. So that's one option. You can go with that. I did a review on this one uh, as well here. And then I have this Radiocode scintillator, which has been really fun. Nice little carrying case. You can get 
for it. And uh, it's in here. It's actually black. I have a protector on it. So yeah, that's the radio code. I call it the pocket scintillator because it's so small and you can just hang it on you and, and carry it around. But it has some really cool capabilities. So these are some fairly cheap options, actually. The, this thing is pretty is relatively inexpensive for what it can do. So these are the types of tools that might help you verify what you have to identify what it is, but also start to give you hints as to whether or not it is a real or fake. So like I said, minerals, you can do all that mineral identification stuff and that can help you. Um, people do crazy stuff out there, burning and coloring things to make fake iridescence, all of that going on, maybe using glass to make fake crystals. I've, I've heard of it all going on out there and even molds to make fake fossils is also a thing. Now I wanna dive into one specific type of thing and that is petrified wood or dinosaur bones. Let's say you've come across a dinosaur bone. You have a piece in your collection, you bought something that was a sample or maybe you bought jewelry that says it has authentic dino bones, stuff like that. So there's one really interesting way to verify if you have a real piece of a dino bone and sometimes petrified wood as well, even some other fossils. And this might surprise, even scare you, but it's a pretty good way to confirm that your specimen is real. So if you want evidence that your bone or your, your fossil or wood is real, then hit it with something like this scintillator. And if it goes crazy and detects radioactivity, well, that's actually a good sign. Believe it or not, it's a good sign because you probably have a real piece then. Now, on a side note, if it doesn't do that, it doesn't actually mean it's a fake because they don't all do that. It's just more of a like, oh, interesting. And it's kind of a good thing you probably wanna check if you've been buying certain fossils, especially dinosaur bones, you want to know that these things actually can be radioactive. So this is why tools like this are kind of fun. So you could actually check the samples in your collection and see if you have any radioactivity. And the cool thing is with a, with a tool like the radio code, you can actually not just, it won't just buzz and say, hey, this is radioactive. Um, there's actually added features with this specific one that help you analyze exactly what is making it radioactive. So I just, I just demoed this in a video adventure, one of our longer field adventures that I do here. We actually went into the field, found a dinosaur bone, and I demoed what the radio code did as well as how we could read its reports and determine what was in it. Spoiler alert, there was uranium. So yeah, I was able to identify the uranium decay products. Uranium has a U-series or a whole line of decay products. Today, just know that these things were identifiers to help me go, yep, uranium's in the specimen. And of course, that helps verify. I mean, I was in the field when I found it, so I knew in that case. But if I had just been given that, that would certainly help verify that I had a real dinosaur bone because I think it's pretty unlikely that someone would actually go as far as somehow plugging radiation into a specimen to make it seem real. But of course, stranger things have happened. So just for fun, let's assume someone did just that. I don't, you know, however, they magically were able to infuse your specimen with radioactivity. Well, what's interesting just for a fun activity is that you can, you could still tell that something was going on in some way. There's actually older glassware called Fiesta Wear and it's, it's radioactive and it has a uranium glaze on it. Um, so let's say something like that happened. You had that you wanted, wanted to analyze or you had like a glaze on your stuff and it's a fake. Uh, how could you tell? Well, there's actually even a way here that you can tell because it turns out there's actually a way that you can tell the difference between uranium glaze, a manufactured form, and the actual natural uranium found in a dinosaur bone sample. And here's how. It's actually that gamma spectra again. And it's something you can do with this radio code. So as I mentioned a little bit ago, you can actually, this has an app that you can use with it. So you can see it nice on your phone screen or on a computer. And you get essentially a graph feature that once you, once you read your item, 
and it detects the radiation, then you'll have your spectra and you can analyze that. So take a look at this one is uranium glaze and this one is natural uranium ore. So look at the difference between the two. There's something clearly different. Remember that uranium decay series I mentioned a little bit ago? Well, that's what comes in here. Uranium has a natural decay and you might have even heard that uranium essentially turns to lead over time, but it doesn't happen right away. It's a decay series. So there's all these other products along the way and you'll see those in your graphs. You'll see the signature for those features. So what really happens though is uranium decays to radium-226 and that's kind of the beginning of the series and then radium-226 down the line to lead-214, bismuth-214. Now when you have something like the manufactured uranium, gla the uranium glaze on the glass, you will not see the second part of that chain. You won't see radium-226 uh, decay products in your graph. But in the natural uranium ore, we do see those products and we do see the bismuth and the lead byproducts. So the latter technique, hopefully, you never actually have to use what I just talked about to detect a fake. You never know, but hopefully not. But it is a really interesting thing to demonstrate what you can do um, with, re with determining what's going on with your items in your collection. As for that dinosaur necklace you might have, well, you don't have to panic. Even if you test it and you find that it, it does kick off a little bit, well, yeah, make sure you do test it. It's good to know. Not everyone will tell you if what they gave you um, is radioactive, but don't panic. You just want to limit the amount of time that you're actually like snuggling with it and wearing it all the time. Um, you don't want that against you because it is radiation, um, but you know, light amounts of exposure aren't really going to be too bad for you. And most of those probably aren't going to be too hot, but do test it. It might even just be fun to test it by getting into some fun radioactivity analysis. And I'll talk about how to do that here further in some of our adventures. Um, if you'd like to get yourself a radio code, I will drop a link in the description and I'll also make sure to put links to some of the other videos that I've mentioned here. Just check the description for those. Otherwise, stay tuned because we'll be doing a lot more uh, fun adventures here in radioactive samples. Um, I already did some stuff with dino bones, like I mentioned, but we'll be doing some other things as well and maybe looking at things like uranium and thorium, uh, mostly in a natural environment when it comes to minerals and fossils. So be sure to check that out. Otherwise, happy rock collecting and rock hounding, and I hope you guys will join me here on the next adventure at Let's Go Geo. Mm -hmm.